It is certain that robots are turning out to be progressively common these days. Robots of every kind are now entering our everyday lives, and these robots are increasingly being conveyed to help us in numerous ways. With all these potential applications and the chance of a large-scale manufacturing and deployment of robots, these machines could get ever-present and, in the end, advance our lives in complex manners. Here in this list, I present to you some of the craziest new robots of the present. This is my fix of tech, bringing you the hottest tech innovations straight to your screens. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. And of course, subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell to keep yourself up to date. Furion Prosthesis Mech racing isn't a sport of the future anymore. It's a sport of the present. A company called Furion brought its first exobionic racing mech called Prosthesis to CES in 2018. Prosthesis is 15 feet tall and weighs over 8,000 pounds. It's technically an exoskeleton, meaning it doesn't operate automatically, as it's completely controlled by a human operator. In layman's words, it's a giant mechanical racing spider. Prosthesis can run up to 20 miles per hour, step over obstacles, and run for up to an hour on a battery charge. The frame is made out of chromoly steel, a high-performance alloy used in sports and aerospace. Both durable and agile, it is capable of tackling any terrain. Prosthesis is outfitted with Virion's Vision S observation camera system for safety and a secondary vantage point. While Furion has developed one racing mech, it also wants to start a whole league, the X1 Mech Racing League. KUKA Robot Car seats are so sturdy because they are tested efficiently by robots until they are perfect. This is exactly what happens at the Ford plants in Merkinich, near Cologne. Two KUKA robots test the new Ford car seats around 25,000 times using a wide variety of load profiles when getting in and out of the car. That's what earned them the name Robots. KUKA's robot can, according to the company, simulate thousands of butts in the pursuit of durability and comfort. Two of the robots are used at a Ford development center in Germany to evaluate new car seats. The tests are very comp, consisting of around 25,000 simulated sing motions for each new seat design. Or, as KUKA puts it, pleasing all the butts on the planet is serious business. This newly equipped seat test laboratory with two KUKA robots at the development center offers the possibility of carrying out all tests together at one location and in-house. To be able to carry out a quality test that is as comprehensive as possible, Ford first analyzes how people get in and out of cars. For this purpose, pressure mats placed on the seats record detailed information. Every person loads a car seat in a different way, so the seat must fit every shape of bottom, whether apple, apricot, or pear. The robot, which is also called the KUKA Occubot, intensively simulates various load scenarios during the approximately three-week test phase, and the dummy enters and exits the system approximately 25,000 times. In a relatively short time, wear and tear can be simulated and analyzed over a 10-year period. If the seat endures these tests and shows no severe damage or aesthetic changes, the seats then go on to mass production and could last up to thousands of car journeys. SoftBank Robotics Pepper As robotics technology evolves, it is believed that personal social robots will be one of the next big expansions in the robotic sector. Pepper is an industrially produced humanoid robot launched in June 2014 that was first created for B2B needs and later adapted for B2C purposes. The machine is capable of exhibiting body language, perceiving and interacting with its surroundings, and moving around. It can also analyze people's expressions and voice tones using the latest advances and proprietary algorithms in voice and emotion recognition to spark interactions. The robot is equipped with features and high-level interfaces for multi-module communication with a human around it. Pepper is a one and a half meter tall wheeled humanoid robot with 17 joints for graceful and expressive body language. Three omnidirectional wheels to move around smoothly, approximately 12 hours of battery life for non-stop activities, and the ability to return to the charging station itself. It is a carefully shaped robot without any sharp edges for a more appealing and safer presence in the human environment. Soft parts and some joints prevent the risk of pinching. The machine's size and look aim to make it appropriate and acceptable in daily life for interacting with human beings. 
It is designed for a wide range of multi-module expressive gestures and behaviors, and is equipped with a tablet, which also makes development and debugging convenient. Recently, the robot is being used as a greeter and to ease loneliness among mild COVID-19 cases in Japan. At the same time, versions of the robot are helping customers remain a safe distance apart in German grocery stores. Stanley Robotics Stan Airport parking has long been a challenge for both the airports themselves and the people who use them, mostly because it all boils down to two things, the lack of space and the long-term parking necessities. French technology developer Stanley Robotics has been working on a robot called Stan. These giant robots can literally pick up your car at the entrance of a gigantic parking lot and then park it for you. You might think that parking isn't that hard, but it makes a lot of sense when you think about airport parking lots. Its construction is somewhat similar to that of a forklift. It lifts cars from one spot and transports them to another, using a variety of sensors and embedded software, actuators, and no operator. Stan is supposed to be the perfect solution for the needs of big parking lots. It doesn't require the site to be significantly altered or fitted with sensors and other tech like it will be the case with actual self-driving cars that need their own virtual environment to operate in. If you're traveling for a few months, Stan Robots can put your car in a corner and park a few cars in front of your car. Stan Robots will make your car accessible shortly before you land. This way, it's transparent for the end user. At Vinci's Line Airport, there will be 500 parking spaces dedicated to Stanley Robotics. Four robots will work day in and day out to move cars around the parking lot. But Vinci and Stanley Robotics already plan to expand the system to up to 6,000 spaces in total. Festo's Bionic Ants Designing a robot that can move and act like a real animal is a much more difficult prospect than merely building something that looks like one. Some of the best examples have come from the engineers at Festo, including a herring gull named Smartbird and a bit of a bounder known as the Bionic Kangaroo. Festo, a German automation company, has invented Bionic Ants as part of the Bionic Learning Network. The Bionic Ants work together under clear rules. They communicate with each other and coordinate both their actions and movements. Each ant makes its decision autonomously but in doing so is always subordinate to the common objective and thereby plays its part towards solving the task in hand. Each 13 and a half centimeter bionic ant is visually impressive as their components are laser sintered and finished with visible conductor structures with electrical circuits attached on the outside, giving them the role of form as well as function. A radio module on the ant's abdomen allows the robots to communicate with one another, and piezoceramic bending transducers are used in the actuators, allowing the legs and pincers to move with fast, precise accuracy. A 3D stereo camera in the ant's head allows it to see, and an infrared optical sensor on its underside records the distance it covers over the floor. Meanwhile, two onboard LiPo batteries provide up to 40 minutes of wireless power before requiring to be recharged in a dock via their feelers. Agility Robotics Digit Sooner or later, your packages might be delivered by a robot that is designed to walk and hand things over to you. Despite recent advances with two-legged robots, most of their movements are unpolished and they have not been able to manipulate objects with stationary robotic arms. Agility Robotics Incorporated presented Digit, which builds on the design of its ostrich-like Cassie robot. Digit includes an upper torso, more sensors, and additional computing capabilities. Most importantly, it has two arms with four degrees of freedom. These arms are useful for mobility as well as for grasping. Digit is strong enough to pick up and stack boxes weighing up to 40 pounds or 18 kilograms, as well as durable enough to catch itself during a fall using its arms to decelerate. In addition to the physical changes, the control system for Digit has been overhauled to enable advanced behaviors, such as stair climbing and footstep planning, all controlled through a robust API that can be accessed both onboard the robot and via a wireless link. Furthermore, Digit's torso houses two multi-core CPUs, and a modular payload bay allows a third computer. In a variety of possible form factors to support additional perception and reinforcement learning capabilities. Digit will be up and walking within five minutes, even for users who are not legged locomotion control researchers. Ford became Digit's first buyer, with plans to use it for package delivery. 
Researchers are working on ways for Digit and Ford vehicles to communicate with each other. Adding arms is a major improvement over Agility's last bipedal robot, Cassie, according to the company. Boston Dynamics Cheetah Developing the cheetah's speed isn't simply about power, it's about conquering the complexity of a four-legged animal's stride. The cheetah borrows ideas from nature's design to inform stride patterns, flexing and unflexing of parts like the back, placement of limbs, and stability. Getting that complicated series of steps to flow together is really impressive. Cheetah is a robot with four feet, which runs at 45 kilometers per hour as of August 2012. As of 2018, the robot can climb stairs. It weighs only 20 pounds. It can perform 360 degrees backflips from a standing position. The Cheetah is designed with modularity in mind. All of the robot's legs have three similar low-cost electric motors using the off-shelf parts. Each motor can be changed for a new one. For jumping, the robot estimates the incoming obstacle's height and distance. The robots understand the best position from which to jump. Next, it adjusts its stride to land before the obstacle. Finally, it exerts sufficient force to push over and up. There's an algorithm to plan the robot's path based on data from LIDAR. LIDAR is a visual system which uses reflections from the laser to map terrain. Cheetah runs on a high-speed treadmill in the lab, where a hydraulic pump power it. A boom like a device makes it running in the treadmill center. A new generation robot has come. Wildcat has come which is designed to operate without any external support. Discussing these crazy robot inventions feels like we're on a sci-fi movie. But wait, there is more. I'm talking about a robot that can heal itself. Wise Institute and Harvard, Urchinbot. Adult sea urchins are complicated critters, and making a robotic version of one of them was asking a bit much. BBC urchins incorporate the same basic features in a much simpler body, and while they're only 0.5 millimeters in size, a scaled-up version with a body 230 millimeters in diameter was much more feasible. Just like the adults, sea urchin babies have two mobility appendages, movable spines and sticky tube feet. This is the design principle used for Urchinbot. As its spines, which a real animal uses for protection, mobility, and to jam itself into crevices, reflect the two different kinds of spines that you see on baby urchins. Each spine is connected to the body with a ball joint, and a triangle of three pneumatic domes around the joint can inflate to push the spine in different directions. All of the domes are interconnected inside of the robot, which means both that the spine can't be actuated separately and that you get a satisfyingly symmetric rotational motion whenever the spines move. As they rotate against the surface that Urchinbot is resting on, the robot slowly turns itself in the opposite direction. The tube feet are a little more complicated, because real urchins excrete sticky stuff that they use to glue themselves to surfaces, and then excrete an enzyme that dissolves the glue when they want to move. Urchinbot instead uses extendable and retractable toe magnets, which work perfectly well as long as the robot is moving on a ferrous surface. As the tube feet inflate, they move outward and angle their tips down, and with enough pressure, the toe magnets pop out and adhere. Urchinbot then reverses its hydraulics to suck the tube foot back in, pulling itself towards the adhesion point and causing the magnet to pop off again once it gets there. The rest of Urchinbot's body is taken up with pumps, valves, and electronics that allows it to operate completely untethered, both on land and underwater. The researchers point out that Urchinbot will not be fast enough to move under the sea, which is expected with most bio-inspired robots. Researchers claim that it could be useful for underwater cleaning and inspection applications, especially in situations where heavy inlays would be a challenge for more conventional robots. Houston Mechatronics Incorporated, Aquanaut. As much as robots are slowly being integrated into our offices and factories, they're also being used in more extreme environments like the ocean, where they can be found tracking marine wildlife and water pollution, hunting invasive species, and even mapping threats to coral reefs. This is reasonable as aquatic environments, especially those in the deep sea, are particularly difficult for humans to access, often requiring a lot of expertise and specialized equipment to navigate through. One solution is the Aquanaut, a transforming subsea robot created by Texas-based startup Houston Mechatronics Incorporated. Built by a team that includes some former NASA engineers, 
The robot is somewhat of a cross between untethered autonomous underwater vehicles, or UAVs, that are typically used for gathering data, and bulkier remotely operated vehicles, or ROVs, which as their name suggests requires human operators to control it from afar in real time. The Aquanaut's design allows it to transform from something that is like a sleek and compact submarine into a vaguely humanoid form that's equipped with two long arms, which allows it to perform various tasks underwater. The Aquanaut can transform into either of the two modes. In Excursion Mode, with its body closed up and streamlined, the 1,050kg robot is launched either from the shore or from an offshore facility. Propelled by two rear thrusters, it then proceeds to autonomously travel at a maximum speed of 7 knots, potentially covering a round-trip distance of over 200 kilometers in one charge of its 30 kilowatt per hour battery pack. Along the way, it's able to perform tasks such as acoustical, optical, and geochemical remote sensing using an articulated sensing head assembly, equipped with sensors such as cameras or sonar units. While it can perform entire missions in excursion mode, the Aquanaut can also transition into work class mode upon reaching a predetermined destination. When it does so, its hull opens up to expose two additional vectored thrusters, two 8 degrees of freedom, electric manipulator arms, and a payload bay. Its sensing head also gains another degree of freedom, allowing it to pitch and roll in order to maintain a good view of the task it's performing. It can then hover in place, moving around as needed, manipulating undersea objects such as valves on oil drilling platforms. And while plans call for it to be capable of performing some basic tasks autonomously, it will ultimately be remotely operated while in the work class mode. Unlike a regular ROV, however, it won't be communicating with this operator via a tether running up to an expensive, fully crewed support ship at the surface. Instead, in a cost-saving measure, that person will be located back on the shore. University of Tokyo's JSK Lab Liquid Metal Since fans first saw T-1000, the shape-shifting antagonist from Terminator 2 Judgment Day, many people have been anticipating the day in which robots made out of liquid metal became a reality. Fast forward to the closing days of 2019. While robotics haven't quite advanced to the level of the future sequences seen in T2, science is getting closer. At the 22,019 IEEE RSJ International Conference on Intelligent Robots and Systems, robotics from the University of Tokyo's JSK Lab presented a prototype for a robot leg with a tendon fuse made out of a metal that can repair fractures. It does that by autonomously melting itself down and reforming into a single piece. It's still a work in progress, but it's basically a tiny little piece of the T-1000 Terminator. The self-healing module is comprised of two halves that are connected via magnets and springs. Each half of the module is filled with an alloy with a low melting point of just 50 degrees Celsius. When the fuse breaks, the cartridges heat, melting the alloy and allowing the two halves to fuse together again. While the refuse joints are not as strong as they were before any break took place, the researchers have observed that gently vibrating the joint during melting and reforming results in a joint that is up to 90% of its original strength. This could be further optimized in the future. Are you hyped up or scared with these new robot inventions? Share me your thoughts by leaving a comment below so I can talk about it with you in the first hour. The future is our really ours for the taking. Find out in my related video, Amazing Drones That You Can Buy Today. I will be talking about the fact that drones aren't just flying cameras, but also the modern version of remote-controlled vehicles. Stay connected, stay up to date.